In the latest inflation report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's rate for or inflation rate for January 2024 surged to 29.90%, marking a significant increase from the 28.90% recorded in the preceding month. The data reveals a notable uptick in the headline inflation rate for January 2024 by 0.98% points when juxtaposed with the December 2023's figures. Delving into a year-on-year -year comparison, the inflation rate for January 2023 stood at 21.82%, showcasing a considerable leap of 8.08% points by January this year, underscoring an escalated headline inflation rate over the same period in the preceding year. This increment elucidates a heightened rise in the average price level for January relative to the increase noted in December last year, highlighting the growing inflationary pressures within the nation's economy. And President Bola Tinubu has ordered the National Security Advisor Noho Rebadu, the Inspector General of Police IGP Kayodi Egbertoku, and the Director General of the Department of State Services Yusuf Biji to work with governors and go after those holding foodstuff. The Central Bank of Nigeria has also stopped international oil companies from repatriating 100% foreign exchange proceeds to their mother companies overseas at once. The Apex Bank said international oil companies can repatriate 50% of their proceeds in the first instance and then the other half after 90 days. We will look at all of these on the show this morning. Welcome on board to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Youth development and of course career building. Also coming up uh, right now, the increasing economic hardship in Nigeria is driving more individuals to seek loans from digital apps, leading to a surge in unrecovered loans as borrowers struggle to repay debt. Lenders, particularly rich debt ones, are facing significant challenges with non-performing loans, prompting calls for improved regulation and real-time credit registries to curb fraudulent borrowing practices. Now, my guest, international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed, joins me now as we look at the latest happenings in the nation's economy. Many thanks for joining me, Mokhtar, on uh, Business Insights. Thank you, Justin. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you are still smiling this morning. Uh, <laughs> most Nigerians are not smiling. That's why you are among the few that are still smiling. Now, Mukta, you must understand that with all the issues that we have, the economic challenges, uh, the fuel um, cost, and uh, people not even being able to buy food, if you keep on uh, feeling gloomy and this uh, so, so, so sad, you just uh, end up developing um, high blood pressure. And before you know it, there's nothing you can do, and uh, you are the one that would suffer. So somehow you just have to find a way to encourage yourself. And the medical, the, the hospitals are not there. And uh -huh. they are telling you that you should Drugs are even very expensive. Inflation that we're talking about, 29, uh, over 29 percent, Mokta. What's happening? As at this time last year, we were uh, on inflation of about uh, 21. So year on year, we've, uh, it has grown by 8 percent, over 8 percent. What is really happening? And particularly, like we had just mentioned, people cannot even afford food. Justin, I think the saddest thing of all this problem is seems that the government seems to be on a different page from the people. When you look at the policies and you look at statements that are coming from them, it's very disappointing, mm. especially uh, from a government that people expect so much economically from them through the economic reforms. Uh, when you have a president saying that um, you should allow the CBN and other people that are absorbed with responsibility, uh, you cannot propose solutions. So you just think they are the idea. Do they have the knowledge? Are they an island of knowledge? So they cannot listen to other people and see that, look, this is what is happening. The em former Emir of Kanu is crying. The Emir of, the present Emir of Kanu is crying. The Sultan of Sukhto is crying. Um, the rulers, even uh, the, 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 those, some of the rulers, the ruler, ruler, I mean, rulers in Lagos also are crying. The people are crying. And yet, it seems to be as usual. They had a, an, an economic summit meeting yesterday. Yeah. I mean, National Economic Council with the governor. I didn't see anything that comes out from that meeting. What they come out are uh, we not put control board governors should go back and employ youth, or we should think about creating post tourists. How does that put food in the in, yeah. in, in the tables of ordinary Nigeria? It's very very sad that um, 
they seem to talk and there's no action and that has been the bane of apc they are propagandists. they came to say everything and they do differently it seems to tell us things are all right but the more you see the least you understand yeah. for inflation i'm not surprised i'm just in who said it before that is even uh, um, um, almost 30 i think that is the official rate mm -hmm. you and i know that if you go to the market you think inflation have hit over 40 percent true when you look at some of the goods that you bought last week and you go to buy them this week they're mm -hmm. already high by uh, high by more than 20 percent so if you look at that inflation is more than that that's the official inflation that figure i keep saying mm -hmm. inflation is higher than what they are doing. and then you look at those inflation to know that rural area is 28 percent for me, that is a sad thing because uh, these people really even um, have any means of income. And here where they are having 28%. Now, we know the cause of this inflation. Number one is the hike in, in the removal of forest subsidy. Whether partially or whatever, it has moved from a low of almost a low of about 100 to a high of about 610. So, definitely has a big impact on the people. Then that's on the cost of transportation, especially for the rural areas to move their goods from point A to point B. Mm. Floating of the Naira, you didn't have the liquidity, you have floated the Naira. The Naira has moved from a, from a low at when you came out of 450, black market rate of 510, to a mm. high of black market rate of 1,600, and, uh, and, and uh, officially of 1,515. Uh, so mm. you, those are what are fueling inflation. Now, what are you doing about it? It seems that you, you are running out of idea. You don't even know what to do about it. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. it's very disheartening. To, I mean, for you to wake up in the morning and you look at your fellow Nigerians, they mm -hmm. seem to not have food to eat. Even if you have food to eat, there's a saying, if you are the richest in the, in the midst of the poor, that means you are the poorest among the poor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we need to, the government need to step up. It's not just making pronouncements. We release green into this. Uh, yet you are not releasing anything. We are not seeing. Sometime ago, you told us they are going to release some bags of rice into the economy, even when they were not enough. We didn't see those bags of rice till today. So why do you keep making statements, taking us for granted? I'm moving to the that itself, um, Mukta, because uh, speaking of greens, uh, releasing bags of rice, I don't, like you said, we've not seen that. I wonder how far that can go if it will not be uh, short-circuited in a way and actually being hijacked. Right now, year on year, food inflation rates officially, like we would say, is about 35.41%. And from the meeting of yesterday, the federal government is asking uh, the National Security Advisor, the Inspector General of Police, to go after food holders. In your opinion, do you really think that is uh, uh, realistic and do you really think that is the issue or are people actually holding food as it were? I think, that's why I said that thing, they seem to be on a different page. I, I, if people are holding food, I think the Emir of Kano would have said it. The Sultan of Sokoto would have said it. He would have talked to his subject. He remember what the Sultan said. Yes, did. Yeah. He said, tell Mr. President, we have been trying to, we have been, we have been the one telling our subject to, 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 to be patient that things will get better. But it will come a point that we will not be able to talk to them again because there is hunger in the land. They are not saying they are hoarding foods. There is no even food to hoard. Is it in the north, in the northeast, whereby it's insecurity is still um, 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 making the farmers not to go to find that you are hoarding food? Where are the warehouses you hold this food? How many of these food are being hoarded? And if these food are being hoard, who are the big agricultural companies that are holding mm -hmm. this food? Who owns these companies? You see, government is just not being sincere. No, I, I, I mean, they need to do things before things get out of hand. See, stands now. In the patient limit of the ordinary Nigeria is beginning to drag too much. Mm -hmm. Government need to do something. You don't just say things without having any fact to back it. So do you mean that the farmer that is that has to cultivate his crop during dry season, making sure he saves it because he knows so he's hoarding food, he's thinking to maximize profit because of cost of production. Mm -hmm. And how what are you doing to reduce the cost of production so that he will bring out this food? You are not saying they should go after them. I think it's just like you are trying to build a short-term measure. We have done this before. You say they should go after food, uh, those are hoarding food. And then on the other end, you are saying that you will not support con uh, control board. So what are you doing in one hand and what are you saying in the other hand? Mm -hmm. Remember, this happened in the FS issue, the, the, the former CBM management team. The EFCC went after foreign uh, exchange dealers. They brewed the change. Yes, and it stabilized the currency for about one week after that. Where are we today? Mm -hmm. So the government seemed not to learn. Government seem to do the same thing all over and over again, and they think they will have a different result. I think they should think twice before um, doing what they they are trying to do. Look, Justin, as we are saying today, mm. the, 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 the MD of Boa Boa Food came up today to say that you cannot even plan because we did from Feb from 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 February 
the customs have increased import duties six times. by 56 percent six times from a low of 920 in the, at the mm. beginning of february to a high of 515 and is that a government that knows that most of what we consume even if, if what we consume is not directly important what of the machinery for those consumptions mm -hmm. all right and they're not being imported mm. let's let's so the government is insensitive Yes, let's talk about um, this forex issue because practically everything is tied to it, the inflationary pressures, uh, the food inflation, because even those that don't buy in dollar still complain about dollar. And uh, just uh, yesterday, the central bank you know, brought out some new policies stopping um, international oil companies from repatriating 100% of their foreign exchange proceeds to their mother companies overseas at once. Now it's going to be done in two uh, phases. How do you see this recent development? Because like you said, we've been having misplaced priority and that uh, we come up with policy some or sort over time. So is this, uh, is there a who uh, just around the corner or something in our forex um, regime? You know, I've said it that, uh, at least on your program, mm. I said the, the CBN governor is a policy man. <laughs> all they think about is policy, administrative policy, no monetary policies. What they are doing is all administrative. Administrative policy is for the short term. It would, cannot be sustained. Mm -hmm. There must be a synergy between administrative policy, monetary policy, and physical policies for you to get the results you want. You can do, do you are saying they should not repatriate their for more than 50%. Then after 90 days, they should repatriate it. So, what mm -hmm. did you, you didn't even tell them that, okay, when you repatriate 50% of those funds, uh, the other 50% 50, uh, 50 must be invested in the next 90 days. So, okay. if I repatriate 50% of the fund and I leave 50% hanging there, what, what does it do into my economy? Does, do, does that boost liquidity? Mm -hmm. And you are trying to say, okay, you want to attract investors. You need to create a two-way two system. The president goes about telling investors that if you come to invest in our country, you'll be able to repatriate your money back to your country at, at any time you want to. And here you are, you are telling investors you cannot repatriate your money immediately. So you are talking with two, two sides of the mouth. The president seems to be on a different page. The uh, CBN seems to be on a different page. That is why we say that the policy, the physical side in a different place, the monetary policy side on a different page. That cannot work sincerely. I don't think it will work. It will only aggregate the, the current challenges we have in FX. They should begin to think what we need is how do you tell them to invest some of these FX into our economy? How do you how do you stop the CBN to be the sole uh, 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 um, um, custody of FX? How do these banks also go? to begin to create all these multinational, begin to create accounts whereby these effects are being put in the bank, mm -hmm. and the bank can begin to say, okay, we want to begin to uh, invest in dollars or pay them some certain percentage, fixed deposit, fixed effects rate. The dollar we have in Naira, we do fixed deposit in Naira. Can they begin to have fixed deposit in effects? Will this, will this investment be better than what they will have if they repatriate this money to their country? That is how we should be thinking. Because the market as it stands now, is thinking of liquidity. We need injection of liquidity, not in the short term, in the long term. What has happened in this country is that we have always not have challenges stabilizing the short term. Our major challenges have been always been how do we improve in the long term? When we have a short term solution, immediately things stabilize. We, we, we remain where we are instead of thinking of the future. So today we are crying for there's no effects in the economy. At the time we start attracting effects, all the diversification talk we are hearing about will cease and we'll go back to business as usual. Yes, it's really, 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 really heart-wrenching when we look at um, the fact that uh, we seem to be misplaced in terms of um, the policies that we are taking and uh, the things that we should really be doing. I want to take, I want to take you back to the issue of um, food inflation, you know, because I'm trying to understand really why food is really so expensive even the ones that we seemingly produce locally is it that our farmers are not really producing anymore or that uh, the issue of insecurity is, is affecting them or is it the dollar itself the fx issue that is affecting you know food production and food security in the country i really want to have a bit of an understanding as regards that mokta um justin i've said something cost of production is high mm. What is influencing cost of production in the rural area where they don't even have machines? Mm. Transportation. Transportation, transportation have, have, price have gone up by over 100 percent, even in the rural area. True. That is one. Where does the dollar come in? I just made mention of something. What are the spare parts that some of these cars will need to buy 
their tires, okay. their whatever, uh, uh, in, uh, maybe engine oil, all those things, the price have gone up. So that have an impact on cost of production. You don't expect them to produce at, and then sell at a loss. No. Demand is high. Production is low because of insecurity also play a part. And cost of production is high. Demand is high. But, but, but and, and, and production is low due to insecurity. So the economic table of demand and supply comes to play. So the price will definitely go up. Oh. Government, not, is it not the same government that told us they will, they will bring in, uh, um, 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 is it CMG buses? True, CMG, to reduce yes. the cost of produ production mm -hmm. so that cost of food price will go down. Have they done that? No, they haven't. Yeah. We have not seen it. Mm -hmm. So they have been playing lip service to a lot of things. They say the policy comes out and everybody rejoices over it and everybody go back to status quo. So the problem as it stands now right. is what with the physical side and the monetary side, mm. unfortunately. You know, before now we say the monetary side is intruding into the physical side. Mm. To make sure it does what the physical is supposed to do. Right. Now what we are saying is that the monetary side seems to be doing nothing that's creating is all the physical side seems to be confused. Okay. Mukta, another thing I'd want us to talk about is uh, how people coping mechanisms and um, the uh, adverse effect also on the on the economy per se. Over time, uh, since last year, we've been talking about um, minimum wage review. Uh, salaries have not increased over time, and uh, inflation is over almost thirty percent officially. Food inflation about thirty five point four one percent. People need to cope, and right now they are resorting to loan apps. You know, and uh, some people actually take those loans with the intent of not even paying back or not even knowing how to pay back. They just want to be able to meet up with those gaps as they come. What do we have in our hands? Because we have lots of unperforming loans right now. Um, Justin, you know, the coping mechanism, I think Nigerians are coming up with coping mechanism. One of those coping mechanisms that have worked for them is JAPA. Mm. <laughs> and it's the middle class. Mm. You see, when you don't have the middle class, your economy cannot be productive. The people that are living the shore of this country are not the very poor. Because the very poor does not even have a means of how to okay, get visa. Not at all. So it's the middle class. The middle class that are the engine room of the economy are the ones living the skilled sector. So we will not see the impact of this now in the short term, but in the long term we begin to see shortage of skill, even when the economy recover. Now you're talking about loan up. Remember that the CBN have come out to say these loan apps are illegal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how much have we been able to regulate this loan app? The CBN came up, is it the Consumer Protection Agency FCC, also FCC, said that they were going FCC, to ban yes. some of this loan app mm. from operating in this country? These loan apps are not spirits. They have addresses. They do. You see, the, the bad thing about the loan app, Justin, is that they go out deforming people's character. Mm -hmm. They send you a message to say this person is a criminal. He has done this, he has done that. I'll give you an example of a message I got, which is very, 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 I mean, it's, 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 it's degrading, if I must use that word. I got a message, somebody must have collected money from the loan app, and the loan app was sending me a message to tell me that that person slept with dog. That he ran away from the center where he's having treatment and that and that. And so she should be careful that wherever anybody sees her, she report her to the nearest police station. Wow. Can you imagine deformation of character? <laughs> I have to call the person and say, this is, he doesn't even know. So that means they are not operating professionally. They are not, not at all. The CBN have said, even said they send it to the bank that no bank should, um, should, should take any action. On default app, unless they must have contacted them. Yes. So, but this loan app, what are their means of collecting? And sometimes, yes, you said there are two sets of people. There are people that have collected with the intention of not paying. You are very right. But there mm -hmm. are people that have collected by the time they pay, what they paid, they've paid, finished paying even with interest, or yet this will still want them to pay to the last couple. Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody borrowing 20000 and you have, you have paid over 40000 They are saying you have to pay 100000 
And again, that's what we talk about. If government is really serious with social investments, then Nigerians will not be patronizing the loan app. If somebody can come up with a loan app and be able to give people money and monitor them, that means the government could sit down also and come up with social investment and be able to reach every Nigerian if they want to. All right. It is so really we need to begin to look in. I'm not supporting the loan app. Mm. You know, it's about those that collect money and don't want to pay. But the loan app also not operating professionally. All right. Mokta, we must say our thank yous uh, to you because uh, we're completely out of time. But then we just hope we are able to just um, turn the tide around and do what is needful because Nigerians are actually suffering by the day. Mokta Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's indeed our pleasure. And that's as much as we have time for on the show for today. Our business Insights will return to your screen same time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Thanks for being there. <laughs>